right, we're headed off to uh, tour around that Sebastian Inlet. Um, hopefully see some wildlife, but I want to check some stuff out. We got to go out to the beach and see that. Um, now we're going to see some of the stuff around on the river side of the inlet and of the peninsula. And it's going to rain in about an hour, so we don't have much time. And I'm the videotaper today because we can't send any video. <laughs> we're going to drive around Sebastian Inlet State Park and check out all the all the stuff there is because tons of people come here fishing boating um lots of birds you know so we're gonna check out we're gonna see what kind of birds we can find because that looks pretty cool with all the fishing here just driving in we saw like lots of birds flying around and everything so out on our uh, little tour here today we're gonna see how many different kinds of birds we can find so what we're gonna do is share 10 tips for successful RV living that we think will help you be more successful. And, and dolphin. this is dolphin. Dolphin, 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 dolphin. Now, wait, I gotta show you the dolphin. Where's the dolphin? Oh my goodness, it's right there. I gotta get out and get the dolphin. Don't let the dog jump up. There he is. There's the two. They're so pretty. They look like they're playing, don't they? So it's rare that we get to see dolphins. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad that like we had the camera with us and we could show you the dolphins. All right, so we drove all the way down to like the peninsula here at the campground and we had to hop out of the car so fast because Alex saw dolphins. Yeah, oh my God, did we pull into SeaWorld or what? There's like five or six dolphins yeah. jumping around in the water. They're doing their little arc dive Yeah, things. jumping and playing and really coming all the way out. So we're so glad that we had the camera with us so we could show that to so you. So you get to see it too. Yeah, it's really cool. And then we were like, this is a great place to set up and tape. I mean, it's a little bit breezy, but if you look behind us, that's all rain. And it's like, it looks really cool, doesn't it? I mean, I, I just love in Florida when you can see the rain coming down. Just know though, it's coming this way. So if we jump up and run, it's because the rain did yeah. get to us. Tip number one. Tip number one is, and this might seem obvious, but know your rig. Yeah. And this is, you know, whether you're in a motor home for the first time, or you, you've had experience, but first time full timing, or if you're doing a travel trailer, towing a fifth wheel or a regular travel trailer, just know the, physical dimensions of yep. the rig first of all the length and the weight and the weight capacities is really important so that your towing experience is going to be more you pleasant know, yeah not, <laughs> not, not a, a catastrophe when when something goes wrong make sure you do the weights with the tanks full because if you're going to eat sometimes you'll travel with full, full water yeah and that's that could be like you know six seven hundred pounds of water so yep. and it is important to know the length because there are some parks that you'll go to and they'll say under 30 foot, you know, or even under 25 foot. So state and national parks and boondocking spots, a lot of times uh, you need shorter, which is why we went with like a 33 foot RV. Um, we would prefer under 30, but we really couldn't find one that, that worked well for our family with the wheelchair and the, the three kids. And two so, dogs. And two dogs. <laughs> so that's important, but also the height's important because you're probably gonna get on some back roads somewhere. You're gonna cross those little bridges. Yeah, that says like 12 foot, three inches clearance. Yep. And you're like, hmm, can I yeah. make it? This is why you always need to be certain of the dimensions of your rig. This tunnel has a clearance of 13 foot, six inches, and we're about 12 foot, six inches. You have to know how high the and thing is. And if you is. have anything sticking up off the top. And then we have our little Wi-Fi booster on the top, which sticks up a little more. So we got about a spare, I'd say eight to 10 inches up there. <laughs> you do want to know your tank capacity. Yeah. Gray tank. water, black water. Yeah. When you're camping, you need to know about, you know, how often you're going to need to be dumping the tanks and yeah. conserve water if you're not hooked up to water. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you're there for more than five, six days or whatever, yeah. however long it takes you to fill your tanks, you know, you need to plan for uh, hooking up, going to the dump station. Welcome to the most glamorous part of full-time RVing. Well, any RVing really. It's so glamorous that you have to wear latex gloves to protect your hands. It's dumping the tanks. So we've been parked here for well, we're going to be here for eight days, so we try to conserve and not fill the tanks, but we didn't make it. The gray tank needs to be emptied, so I got to go. Me and Jared are going to empty the gray tank, which is just the sink water and shower water and stuff. But instead of 
packing up and driving over there, we have the little uh, honey wagon, they call it. It's a 15 gallon portable tank on wheels that Jared likes to uh, haul yeah, up to Yeah, the... when he said we're not driving a quarter mile, it's because Jared's walking a quarter mile with the honey wagon. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta take the, uh, unscrew that black one. Yep. Yep, so, and that's important because sometimes you might have to drive, like I know out in California at one point, we had to drive an hour to find the closest dump station. Yeah, we were on the middle so, of nowhere. So, we were there like a week and a half and, and generally we can make it six, seven days if we're using the, the bathhouse. Um, in like a national park like that. So that's what we did, but we still had to hook up and drive. So know your rig, know everything about your rig. It's also important if you're in the planning phase to know what your style of camping is going to be. If you want to go to a lot of national parks, um, you try to find something yeah. under that 27 foot. Smaller is better. Foot, um, yeah. Mark so you can fit into more national parks. All right. Rain hasn't made it here yet. Are we still good? Yeah, I think good? we're okay. I think I it's think all like going to go past us. It does. It does look like it looks like it's going that way. Okay, our next tip is flexibility. This is very important in full-time RVing. Um, you need to be flexible when things happen, especially <laughs> if you're traveling a lot, like if you move every like five, six days or whatever. Things are going to happen, things aren't always going to be as you plan them, and it's really critical. Your experience is going to be so much better if you're flexible and yeah. able to sort of absorb those ups and downs. And yeah, be ready for change and, and, you know, just you just have to learn to be a little bit more laid back and a little more easygoing because, you know, things aren't always going to go your way. You, you may run into a bunch of traffic, so you get to a campground after dark instead of during daylight, and sometimes it's hard to find your way into a state park or or you know to find your campground when it's dark it's always nice to get there when it's light or you might get to places which we used to always do even though we knew this was going to happen we get to this certain state park and they close at dusk yeah and we get there a half hour and it's already dark and the gates down there's no code to get in and you're stuck so yeah. things like that happen and you have to be flexible but, either camp yeah. there camp at the grocery store nearby <laughs> Yeah. So this is a camping spot for the night. Yep. So you got to be ready for change. And I know in the beginning it was harder for us. We were we were we were really stressed when some things you know didn't go our way. But I, I think we both you know we've really learned to go with the flow. The more it happens, so, the more you, you yeah know, learn to deal with it. And then you you look back and you're like ah I've been through yeah. a lot worse. And it and it honestly everything always seems to work out. And in general, if you can learn to not stress about you know that leads us really into our our next one which is don't don't sweat the small stuff you yeah. know um, yeah pretty kind of similar it, but that is the next tip yes is to not sweat the small stuff that just comes along with the ups and downs of, of life in general yeah full-time RV living is a little bit more um, likely that you're gonna run into <laughs> some change so we got the Chino Hills got in our sight it'd be good except a has no service, no cell service, and we're doing VidCon and trying to upload videos. And also, there's like 11% and 13% grades coming in. Everybody is coming in the tourists, except for that he's driving Ivy. We have to go ahead and, because it's a one way road, very narrow, and so, steep. and steep. So we're going ahead telling everybody to get out of the way. So we had to find another campground. We looked up, found a KOA, and we're actually gonna be staying there 29 days. You know, when you're full-time RVing, you're going from one place to another, staying yeah. at a different campground or in a different yeah. state every week or month. Things are so different and there's a lot more that can kind of happen, so. Yeah, so you're gonna have little things that come up and, you know, in the past would have gotten you stressed, but, you know, hopefully you, you learn that, you know, don't let it get you so stressed. You know, look look at where you are. That's what I kind of do when, when we get upset about something. We're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe, you know, the tire just blew and how are we going to get this and that? It's delayed us five hours and cost us all this money. But then I take a deep breath and go, okay, but we're full-time RVing, traveling around the country, seeing all these beautiful places and been blessed with such an opportunity to, to do this and share this with our kids that 
just the stress melts away. It's like, all right, roll with the punches, and it's it just look at it like an adventure. And then right. she spends the next like two hours trying to break me down. Off the <laughs> all right, so I think we're just gonna get in the car. We may have to tape a few tips in the vehicle yeah, as we drive around, show you out the window. There's a wall of rain coming. <laughs> you can like, see it. It's just, halfway just, over yeah. the river there. Yeah. And we've got about. Uh, I'm giving it about three or four minutes and it's going to be here. here. Camera girl, Alexandra, show them the uh, wall of rain moving towards us. It's yeah, just kind of gray. Oh, look at the, look at the, you can actually see the water. Like, you can see the water. Yeah. All right. Right above the water. All right. Okay. It was, uh, it started right as I started getting in, and it just downpoured right when Diane was putting the wheelchair in the back, so. All right, so we had just made it in out of the rain, and Brian said, oh, it's just a little band, but then. Yeah, yeah, so we're in the little band right here now, and this is coming our way, so. So as soon as this little band clears out, we'll have to go back to the RV, get in and everything, so we don't get soaked during that whole process. But first, we're gonna finish up our tips finish our tips we have we have a few more tips we're gonna so we might be hanging out in the car you might yeah, hanging out in the car the with us to do the tips yeah <laughs> all right yeah, traveling with back. pets no traveling but, with pets no that's okay. not the next tip that's not the next tip we should do a thing on traveling with pets though because they're so sweet next tip for successful RV living I don't know what is my next tip the next tip is don't rush and this we definitely learned this lesson. Um, didn't take too long, a couple of months in. We learned um, the don't rush. Remember, you now full-time RV. It's not a vacation, so you're not trying to cram everything in like, oh my gosh, we have one week and we've yes. got to get all this in. And You're not going back yeah. in a few weeks or whenever. No. It's, it's hopefully an open-ended yeah. journey that you're gonna be on so you have time to, and it's, it's the old saying, you know, stop and smell the roses. And I think it's such a cliche because it has some merit. I mean, yeah, you, you could walk by, you know, during your daily grind, walk by a rose bush a hundred times and not, yeah, not, and not and see it and, and stop and enjoy it. So that's kind of what you run a, a full time very, RV trip. Very profound, honey. Yeah, it is. Like, I didn't come up with it on my own. No, I, no, I, I think I've heard that before. <laughs> But no, I think one of the things we were still doing in the beginning when we started was we were in vacation mode. Peppers, Sorry, I was getting Peppers giving kisses. Get, get back here. Uh, we were in vacation mode in that we felt we had to drive a lot when we drove. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, we gotta we go did. here, we gotta go there. Yeah, it was like, we have to go here. So, like, all right, we drive 12 hours this day and 10 hours. And we, we did used to do that. When we were on vacation, if we had a set, like, two weeks, you, you drove as much as you could in one day. So that, that was a big thing for us. Um, with kind of don't rush was the driving part of it. You know, drive six hours one day overnight somewhere, just stop and enjoy yourself. Yeah, and make um, the travel days part of the journey. And that yeah. way you're not thinking, oh, I'm wasting all this time driving. I've got to get there, we got to go yeah. fast. If the travel is part of the journey and you enjoy it, then, you know, it's a lot less stressful. It's raining, it's pouring, oh man, it's snowing. Yep, the bed and up the head. It's gonna get up in the morning. It's raining, it's raining. Anyway, so our <laughs> next one, what's our next one? This one. Oh. So be prepared to be offline. Yeah. You can And what does that, that mean, Alex? Um, so like it's covered this week, if I'm covered or whatever. Yeah. And so like plan like so if it's week here we can go to this store and there's better Wi Fi or whatever. Okay. Basically it be means Be prepared to be offline. You're not always gonna have good cell coverage. Right, and there are ways you can get better cell coverage. You can have the booster like we have. You can go into the nearest town or whatever, and get yep. McDonald's or, you know, Panera Bread, I guess. They have free Wi-Fi. Yeah. Um, you can find places. Flying J gas stations. Sometimes too. it's okay if you can get away with it to just not be connected. Yeah. It's a lot more relaxing that way, and maybe you can take some time to just go on a hike or something, or sit outside and just enjoy wherever you're staying yeah move the log like from there to here <laughs> yeah not have to look at your email or instagram or tweets yeah. or facebook and that's or something else. that we're gonna we try, try to, to do more of is is disconnect them um, it's tough with the youtube channel trying to yeah and school trying to get we stuff always have to you loaded know. And, yeah school is is online we you know, 
kids need it for that. But do know that you're gonna go places, and that goes back to don't sweat the small stuff. You're gonna go places where you're not gonna have Wi-Fi. You're not gonna be able to connect. Um, you may have to drive. There are places we had to drive an hour, you know, if we wanted to go call someone or um, look yeah, up I'll something, get something, some email, check emails, yeah. that kind of thing. All right, so we're driving back to the RV because it's still raining and maybe we're hoping it's supposed to clear up and then maybe we can get out on a bike ride, show you a little bit more of the park when it clears up and maybe get out and see some more wildlife, some more birds. Although it's going to be hard to top seeing the dolphins, I got to say that. I mean, it doesn't get much better than the dolphins. Highlight. All right, back to find some more birds. Yep. This park is known for fishing. It's actually one of the few Florida State parks that is open 24 seven. So it's actually open 24 hours a day that you can come and go. And that's because people love fishing here so much. It's just loaded with fish. And I guess that's why it's loaded with fishermen and loaded with really cool birds. So we're gonna see what other cool birds we can find around here. All right, so another tip is that you can survive on a lot less than you think. You'd be surprised that once you move into your RV, you find like, wow, I don't need some of this stuff that I brought along, right? Yeah, like we <laughs> like we bought like all this stuff and then like now the past couple months, we've been like, okay, we don't need this. We haven't used it for the past six months, so let's get rid of it. We actually, we held on to some things for, you know, there was stuff we got rid of right in the beginning. Like a month in, you'll be like, okay, this was silly, I don't need this. And then six months in, we are like, all right, if we haven't used it in six months, seven months, eight months, then we don't need it. So we've been spending time, we're, we're always donating stuff here and there. We had a few things that, extra extension cords and things like that that we gave to a, uh, a fellow RVer that was thrilled for it. So you would be surprised. So if you're just planning an RV and thinking of doing it and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, I, I need all my stuff. I need all my clothing. I need this stuff in the kitchen. That was my big one. I'm not clothing. I was okay with with paring down my kitchen stuff because I love to cook and bake. It was a tough one, but uh, I still do pretty much all the baking and cooking that I did at home now with just a lot less stuff. We found the spot where the buds hang out. We're gonna have to go back and look these birds up. So we're gonna put it down on the screen then, so you'll find out what they are. Because I don't know what these white ones with the kind of grayish, blackish heads and beaks. I don't know if there's some kind of pelican. All right, so another thing to be prepared for with full-time RV life is to be a lifelong learner. So you'll always be learning new things, whether it's you know a new town, a new place that you're going, you, you have to get directions there, find your way, um, a new area, and things like that. So you're always or, made, or stuff about like history or anything. Yeah, like right now, we were just in the museum back here, and here at Sebastian Inlet State Park in Florida, they have two museums, a fisherman's museum and then what they call a treasure museum. Mm -hmm. And so we're constantly, um, you know, going in and learning new things. It's great for schooling the kids. Um, today we picked up some stuff we're gonna learn about manatees and some of the birds that we're finding around here. But even if you don't go to museums and stuff, like you said, you'll always be, you know, learning a new area. It's, it keeps your mind like really sharp. They say as you get older, you're supposed to, you know, continuing education and learning and that's what you do when you full-time RV because you know you're, you're going to whole new areas like one thing I learned on this trip so far is is I learned where Missouri is Missouri and Kansas I could have never told you where they were on a map so the lady in the store or in the um, museum gave cool stickers mm -hmm. so that's what you can find that. here raccoon we saw a raccoon here last night what else Manatee. Manatee. We have not seen those. They say they that lady that day said she butterfly. saw one. Butterfly. Butterflies. You've seen butterflies. And turtle. And that's the turtle. And unfortunately, this is the time of year they aren't. That's something you just you just learned that about the, mm -hmm. the turtles and the nesting. They actually lay their eggs here, 
in like March, April, May. And then they do tours here at this, the park um, along the beach in June and July when the little, the little baby turtles are hatching out. It's so neat that he's fishing with his net, um, and the birds are like just waiting there, like to see if there's any leftovers. <laughs> the park split up into like different sections. So like one has a museum over here, and then one in is the campground with another museum, and then. This one is another beach access. Okay. Is that fun? Yeah. Sand drop, courtesy of Alex. So with all the learning you do, what is this that we are looking at now? The Atlantic Ocean. Very good. I think she's digging a hole so we can stand and be the same height. Totally the same height now. It's good. She sees she dug a hole. I it. have a hole. Okay. So I made a hole. This next tip is one that is not hard for Alexandra if you've seen her at all. Yeah. yeah. It's be social. Be social. Talk a lot. Talk. But be cut. And you disappeared. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Helicopter. Oh, look at that. Helicopters. What we mean by that is. You know, you're out and you're RVing all these different places. You're always meeting new people. And but since you're in new places, you don't really know what to do. So, yeah. Or anything. So it's fun. Get to talk to the locals. Find out what to do, what's the best things to see and do in an area. Um, and then you get to have friendships. Yep, then you have friendships. Alex still has friends from I two, three years ago. I have like ago. three friends from like a couple years ago. Yep, that she's met when we've been camping places and I've, she stays I, in touch. Yep. yep. So it's good to be so, and plus, it's so interesting. One of the things we love the most is meeting other RVers and finding out what they do. A lot of them aren't full-time. They maybe just do part-time a few months of the year. Some are full-time. Some have sold all their things to travel. Some have a tiny house as a home base. Some keep their home base and, you know, go back to it six months of the year. So it's really interesting to meet other people and find out what they do. And maybe you can get some tips from them too. And yeah, and you get lots of good tips from them. So remember, one of the other things that makes your full-time RV living really enjoyable is to be social. And don't forget to play in the water. Can I go play in the water? Okay, look at those flags. Little lifelong learner, what, are the, what does the flag mean? That is a marine, high marine life. Yep, dangerous marine life. That is very high, like high current, high tide, so like don't go too far in. What if it's a double red flag? That means water is closed to public, but you can still go on the beach. Yep, so it's you can't even water. get your feet wet, right? Yep. Okay, so let's see. So now we got, I dragged her off the beach, because she's mm -hmm. like, I think when we left her, she was running back and forth. Um, <laughs> and I literally, because she loves the beach. Okay. But, so we're done biking. We're going to do this one more that we're going to do for now? Yes. Okay. And it is, places may not be what you expect. What does that mean? That means like... like you came up with this and this was yeah, yours. Yeah, it's great. Right? It means that like, maybe you go somewhere and you're there for two weeks. And it looked like in brochures, it looks amazing and beautiful, and it is, except you hit it when it's really cold or really hot or it's raining all the days. You can't really do much. You could hit like heavy tourist season. You gotta watch for that. Mm -hmm. Like if you go someplace and it might be, you know, just the busiest time of year at that particular place. And that's why we say be flexible. 
because if you're scheduled to be there two weeks and you get there and maybe like Alex said the weather's terrible maybe it's supposed to be like raining off and on or maybe, super cold or maybe your friends like two of your friends told you like oh it's amazing but you just don't like it that much and you so can, just leave early yeah leave change early your, change your plans so and there's been a lot of places there's been a lot of places we've been like really surprised at how beautiful it is and then we're like we wish we could stay longer and I think this place too, Sebastian Inlet, is one of these places that was just kind of a stopover for three days. We mm -hmm. love it here. We can't stay longer right now because we have some commitments. So we got to be up north and you know freeze to death for Thanksgiving. And comment down below if you like this tip because it's my idea and it's great, right? So before we give you a final tip, we want to let you know that if you're in the Melbourne area of Florida on the Atlantic coast, that if you come to Sebastian's Inlet State Park, it's really neat here, really nice beaches. Yeah, highly recommended. Yeah, very, very nice. Very empty, great campground, lots of fishing, lots of birds and wildlife. So it's really cool. And so we had fun giving you a little tour around here. But now for tip number 10. Tip number 10. And this is an important one, this is the most important one, we saved the best for last. And that tip that will, the most important one to help you be successful at your full-time RV living is... Always have fun. Always have fun. And enjoy the journey. All the tips that we gave you will help you um, on that journey. But the most important thing, the way you measure success in full-time RV living is to be happy and to enjoy the journey. So make sure you're doing that in everything you do. And yeah. it will be not great. just full time RVing, just so with anything in life, you yeah. know, make it your best life, enjoy what you're doing, and your enjoy the adventure, enjoy the journey. Yeah, make the most out of your situation. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Um, we could take tips, we could learn more. We, we can always need, learn we more. We have a lot to learn, <laughs> <laughs> we find that out every day. Yeah, we love learning. <laughs> We've found that uh, you know, the more we do, the more we learn. So, we want to hear tips. Uh, if you have any questions, let us know as well, mm -hmm. and we'll try to help you out along your full-time RV adventure. Um, also, if you want to join our community and Patreon, the link is down below. Come on over for some bonus footage. So, we'll see you next time, and thank you for watching. Bye! Bye.